Hey guys, Cam here from today's iPhone.com and I'm just going to go through a quick walkthrough of iOS 7 Golden Master. Now the reason I'm doing a quick walkthrough is because it's pretty much as close to the official version as what we're going to get before the actual public release on Wednesday. And once that happens, obviously we're planning to do a rather more in-depth look at all the new changes and apps. So I wanted to show you what it looks like in its kind of current state, which is almost certainly going to be its final state and the one that you will see on your own iPhones and iPads. Now, the obvious place to start is on the lock screen. Now, on the surface, it, it's obviously got a new user interface. The typeface and the font used in the clock and the calendar, uh, time and date, etc., is all a lot thinner. Um, and slide to unlock's been completely changed. But also, you'll notice you've got these bars, these pill-shaped bars on the top and the bottom. And if you drag the bottom one up, this is where you get control center. Now, this uh, control center is probably one of the most useful parts of iOS 7 as a whole because it gives you access to uh, quick access toggles so you can switch on and off uh, airplane mode and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and do not disturb and orientation lock. You can change brightness, you can change volume on any music track that's playing and you've got access to AirDrop which is a new feature whereby you can send files etc across uh, a local Wi-Fi network to anyone else who's got iOS 7 running. You've got camera, calendar, a clock slash timer and the flashlight which switches on the light on the back. So if you're stumbling around at night and you want to just be able to see where you're going, you don't have to go into your camera app or download a third party app to do that. It's already built into Control Center. It's really, really useful. Something you will notice a lot reoccurring in almost every app is this new transparency whereby if you drag a layer above um, the, the norm layer, you'll see that it blurs it out and has like this translucent effect. So any color that you've got here will show up um, in control center but then if you drag down notification center it's obviously a lot darker it's a more smoky glass look so you still get the color but it's a lot darker the great thing about notification center now is that it's got three pages the first one is by far the most useful it tells you the dates it tells you the current weather and it tells you if you've got any appointments coming up and it will also tell you once it's figured out all your locations it's almost like google now and it will tell you um, your traffic conditions to your frequently visited locations like work or home. It's got stocks on there and then it tells you what's happening tomorrow. Scrolling across will show you um, all your notifications like Notification Center does and then if you scroll across again it just shows you the ones that you haven't read yet. Now if we unlock, I'll unlock upwards because I wanted to show you the new camera user interface as well. You uh, press and hold the camera icon, flick it up and then you'll notice that it all looks different to iOS 6 and iOS 5. Now if I scroll across, you get to the square Instagram style user interface. You've got a panorama, which is its own separate um, function within the camera now. If you swipe all the way to the left, you've got video. And what you've also got in here is filters. Now you can add them while you're taking the photo or you can add them afterwards. Uh, HDRs on the top, you can change cameras so you can see me there. And that is your camera in a nutshell. Now I wanted to go over the stock apps. This is something that has really dramatically changed. Instead of all the apps having their own kind of unique identity where they're all covered in different colors and textures, um, Johnny Ive and his team of designers have come up with apps that all look and feel the same. They all look like they belong in iOS 7. So when you open up photos, it's mostly white and it will show you photos there with black and blue text. You'll see the same when you go into Safari. Um, everything is kind of white and grey and black and blue. Um, while we're on Safari, I may as well show you some of the cool features that are in here. Um, probably one of the key ones is the open pages. Now, it not only shows you the pages that are open on here in a kind of card style, which you can then just flick away. Oh, no, you can't. You can just press the cross in the top corner. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll get access to your iCloud tabs. So any other devices that you've got um, pages open on, you can actually just open those right there. And then you've got access to your private browsing as well. This is your sharing menu, which will show up in any app that's been optimized to run on iOS 7. And it will give you all sorts of options. If it's a photograph, you'll get the option to share it on Flickr and also Vimeo for videos. In uh, Safari, obviously, you've got bookmark, reading list, home screen, copy and print. All the default apps, apart from weather, I've all got this kind of white user interface, so everything looks like it belongs. This is Notes, 
with a search bar on the top. You see everything's been stripped away to its core basics. If I open up uh, reminders, you'll see very, very similar. Again, slightly different colors, but it all feels like it belongs. Again, calendar with slightly different colors again, but it all generally it's all white. It's all very clean and flat. Um, calendar is rather more useful than it ever has been. You can scroll through days at the top here. You can go back to month views here and scroll up and down to choose a month and you can change your calendars. You can choose different calendars here. Um, there's all sorts of cool stuff in here. Obviously, any invitations to go to events or share events with other people will show up in here as well. Quickly, we'll look at newsstand. Again, you can see we've got rid of all the wooden shelves and it's a very clean uh, shelves type system. But again, it's like this translucent effect that we see, but a slightly more opaque. Perhaps one of the most notable changes and most obvious changes is multitasking. When you double tap your home key now, Instead of getting a row of icons on the bottom of the screen, it's got its own unique user interface. If you want to get rid of an app, you can just swipe it up and it's gone. If you want to do more than one at once, you can do. It's not easy. You just use two fingers like so and it makes the process slightly quicker. It would be nice to have an option to just cancel them all, but as far as I know, that isn't around just yet. And again, folders is new. Instead of having like a little pop down menu box thing, you just go into a bespoke new home screen where it shows you a folder full of your apps. Now, if you happen to have too many to fit into one screen, you can slide across and you can add as many as you like. So you're not limited to 12 or 16 anymore. And last but not least, shall we talk about Siri? Now it's got a completely new makeover. They've added in tons of new features. You can search through Wikipedia or Twitter or Bing. It's got so many things on there. Actually, if I was trying to show you everything on here, I think it would take all day. So the best thing I can advise you to do is to just try anything. Just try and see what Siri can do and then you'll find out what it can't do and what it can do. What's in my calendar for Friday? Okay, I found three appointments for Friday. There we go. So it opens up your calendar in this really nice translucent, again, frosted glass style user interface. And you'll notice if you're using iOS 6 or iOS 5 now, the icon's completely changed and when you speak, it shows you the waveform so that you can see that it's actually hearing you as well. Now, if you want help with Siri, it does have a little question mark here and you can just go through some of the things it, it can do. So you go to the phone one, it gives you all sorts of suggestions. There are so many in there. Uh, again, FaceTime is a little bit more basic, but you can launch any apps you want from Siri you can send messages or you can read them. It will read out messages for you. You can go do all sorts of things in maps. There is so much Siri can do now that actually if you spent time doing it, you could actually use it for almost anything. So you don't actually have to type or anything at all. But anyway, this has just been a quick overview of the Golden Master. If you want to find out more, please feel free. I'm at TIP underscore cam. You can ask me any questions on there. I will have more in-depth coverage as well as having iPhone launches covered on Friday. Uh, we'll get as many new devices as we can to cover for you and show you all the cool new stuff that's coming out. But in the meantime, I will see you again soon.